My name is Fred Weinberg. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the voice that is on the morning show with Rod uh, after about 8.30 most mornings. And uh, I happen to be the CEO of the company that owns KWNA, among other radio stations. We're here tonight because Pat Choate, A, happens to be an old friend of mine, uh, and B, wanted to come back to the scene of the crime. Seems that uh, Humboldt County went uh, 14% for Pat and Ross Perot back in 1996 and he's got a new book out and he wanted to talk to like real Americans uh, and I guess you can't find real Americans in Washington and New York can you? You can but there you'll get some uh, interesting views. <laughs> <laughs> you know we get interesting views out here but uh -huh. it, it seems like people are closer to their neighbors here you know I, I wrote yeah. a piece if you remember uh, where I said that the best way to explain Winnemucca, America, to somebody is these are the exact kind of folks you want as your neighbor. Which, you know, having lived in a lot of other places, I can tell you that's not always the case. So, um, Pat's got a new book. Uh, I'll, let me pick it up. It's called Saving Capitalism. Um, and what's amazing about this book is Pat was a vice presidential candidate with Ross Perot in 1996 and wrote a book called Save Your Job, Save Your Country. There's an amazing similarity between the two books. And that was his economic plan for Ross in the Reform Party back then. Uh, and at that point, let me ask you a question. What's changed since 1996? We're just deeper in debt, deeper in trade, lost more jobs. We had 17% of our workforce that was employed in manufacturing were down at this point to about 11. We got 11 and a half million. We're losing about 90,000 workers. I mean, the giant sucking sound was real. <laughs> yeah, now, back then, you were opposed to NAFTA. Yes. Has NAFTA turned out to be exactly the bust? It is. Well, let's just look. We can just go through the numbers here. Uh, if everybody would pick up their book and open it to page 79. Pop quiz after the show. Yeah. If you go to 79, here is our trade data for uh, the period 1960 through the year 2008. So what the real number that counts is the uh, number that says total. That's the U.S. trade balance. You take a look at 1960 through uh, up to 1970, we run a surplus in trade. Here in the early 1970s, you're having the Kennedy trade round begin to take hold. You then move over and take a look. We were running minimal trade deficits through uh, the 80s. Well, explain the term trade deficit. Uh, it's you take, uh, you take how much you export and how much you import, and you just subtract the difference. If you're exporting, more than you're importing, you're running a trade surplus. You're creating national wealth. If you're importing more than you're exporting, you're running a trade deficit, and you're losing national wealth. Well, take a look here. NAFTA went in in 1993. We had a trade deficit of $70 billion that year. That used to be a lot of money. <coughs> it was a lot of money. It still is. Then just take a look, it, down through 95, we, put, we joined the World Trade Organization. In effect, we extended NAFTA to 150 other countries. And then you just start to see the outsourcing of American factories and jobs running on down to last year. Even uh, with this mini depression, we lost almost $700 billion. Now, let me, let me put this into... Uh, a context. Department of Commerce says that each billion dollars of trade equals about 14,000 jobs. We take a look at our unemployment today. There's 26 and a half million Americans uh, out of work. Half of now those that, are the ones that those are the ones that are like applying for unemployment. Those are the ones that haven't given up their job search. No, this yet. includes uh, this includes the discouraged workers. But these are people, through the surveys, if they could get a job, they'd, they'd take, take a job. Okay. And it, that are looking, that want a job. Take a look here. $700 billion. 
here is somewhere like uh, 40 percent of our unemployment loss in this country right here is in this number. Uh, those that just came in, uh, let us make sure we get you a copy of the book. So no, uh, it turns out that there was a giant sucking sound in these trade deficits. And you take a look at companies, if they can move to Mexico or then move to China and they can get workers at $5 a day, no unions, no environmental laws, no safety laws, they will go there. And China's been the big beneficiary. One of the things that I point out in the trade chapter is that something like 75% of our total deficit in manufactured goods is with one country, and that country is China. Now, there's a whole series of things that we can do about this. I mean, I get into the question of how serious is our situation today. Well, this year we'll have about six million homes foreclosed. We've got, by the end of this year, will be a double-digit uh, unemployment. I think there will be something in the neighborhood of 30 million Americans out of 155 without jobs. You break it into specific categories of workers, minorities, that'll be 20 percent. You take it into teenagers, what we have is 25 percent unemployment rate among teenagers 16 to 19 years old. We have a whole cohort, population group, that is uh, drifting into sloth, crime, gangs, etc. Now, large numbers of those kids are in urban areas where there are no jobs, where the private sector can't create jobs. One of the things that I propose in this book is that uh, these kids need direct government employment. This is the only way they're going to get a job and that we should do the most successful program, a job program, out of the New Deal, we should recreate the civilian conservation work, the CCC. The CCC took... Now that, that, that was the only part of the New Deal that wasn't ruled unconstitutional. That's right. And it turned out to be one of the most popular. Uh, basically, uh, what we did is we took, over a nine-year period, six million uh, young men, uh, we put them in the national forest, we put them into the parks, uh, we had them building trails, we had them doing reforestation, uh, building cabins, etc. In nine years of the CCC, uh, those people, those workers, uh, put in three, mi three billion trees. Half of all the reforestation America's ever done was done by what they call the CCC boys. They put that in. Uh, they spent six and a half million hours fighting forest fires, and they lost 40 plus lives fighting forest fires in this country. You can still go to the national parks and many of the trails, the benches, the oversights, uh, 75 years later, are still in use. Well, we have a big backlog of work right now for uh, young people in our forest and in our parks. We've got an estimated seven billion dollars of backlog. Now, in uh, the uh, Roosevelt era, what they did is uh, they paid thirty dollars a month. They provided clothing, housing, uh, meals, they provided everything, and they sent back twenty-five uh, dollars a month of that back to their families. So if we put it in, let's say a minimum wage or a little bit above a minimum wage, for young people, uh, provided everything, let's say they would keep a quarter of it while they're on their work, that build up savings. A lot of them uh, would come out of that, they'd have some money to go to school. Many of them might go into the military. It would change their lives.